Maar het is eindelijk maar een lewe, basically, de getal story van mij van hoe ik dan naar gaan en om het dan net uit te kunnen voor die wereld in een manier wat ik kan, want het is wel moeilijk voor partij mensen om het te doen, zoals ik, dus ja, kunst is kunst. Kunst. Kunst het mij hele leven veranderd, toen ik klein was, dat ik dan ontdek. Dit is ook een manier van kunst. En dat da was net voor mij een manier van Skype en Nexus zijn en wie in de moment. En toen een groot ding ontdek ik drama. Dus ik zei, oh wow, I actually love being on a stage, not dancing, but actually speaking words and telling a story to people. Toen, so, um, ja, van daar af, en omdat ik ook zo'n paar groot extravert is, is het net voor mij zo so van om die verschillende karakters te beheers en Mijn dat karakter is maar eigenlijk te maken en dat is in de riskunde te klimmen. Kijk, ik weet dat ik zijn de beste schrijver onder andere. Um, maar als ik één persoon kan raken op buiten, waarop van hou of je weet, soms stem nog meer dan het ik mijn doel bereik. Het gaat niet over hoe goed je is of wat je kan doen. Zo met je enige kunst, verstaan? Het is. It was a form of escapism for me as a child. And to I always it. Um, I was like, yes, I love it. I love it to mensen to entertain. I love it to learn the feelings to rock. I hou it van mensen te laat denk en boodschappen oor te draai. So why not make a career of it? Um, so dit werd ek ek het 'n escape uit omstandighede soms wat nie vir my dreig was nie, omstandighede wat vir my moeilik was, deur te ontsnap in 'n story wêreld. En nou is het my werk om ander mense te help ontsnap. Ek was baie op school, kom ons begin dat ek was baie school met teruggetrok met sy soort en stel, was nie baie te leer nie. En ek voel, ek was een mens wat gauw het van praat. En ek kon net my stem daar buiten kry nie, so toe voel ek my drama, kan ek talk in mense sy levens in klim dier my eie stories te vertel. En talk miskien net net, kan ek in mense leven verander. Al weet ek het nie, maar toch, as het gebeur, dan is ek in my woord. Calm down. <laughs> You're going to make friends um, and everything's going to be okay. And you know, after a while, you're going to realize that this is this is what you want to do, you know? So, calm the fuck down. Just, um, I was very nervous about making friends and uh, fitting in. And now it's just kind of like, I don't really care because I have made a family more than friends. So, yeah, I just tell myself to calm the fuck down. Uh, keep calm, don't overreact, don't overthink, take everything as it comes and goes. Uh, I'm a, I don't want to say a paranoid person, but I am someone that <laughs> likes a bit of control in the things that I have to do, in the craft I have to do. But I realize the more and more, you know, with film and stage, you can't really always plan everything to the brim. Something's gonna go wrong, something's not gonna work, and 
I think this year really taught me how to deal with that, how to breathe, take it as it is, and just let the show continue. I've said for a good idea, said don't stress, your anxiety from what we have to Yeah, it is surrounded with means of giving shit. Um, you might not hear me, but to get me with this. Oh, I'm not just getting a phone answer with your heart, but I can't even know what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm looking at them on the English to say and what I would say. Put your heart in it, even if you don't like it. Especially, like, where I can give an example was with uh, when I did Kanarti Author. I did not connect with Tani Kanarti at any level. But we had to tell a story and entertain. And uh, there was this moment before actually going on stage where I was like, okay. This is this is what I always wanted to do. Wanted to be on stage, and that's and it was like the night of the HPE, and I was just like, and that's the first time I really connected with her. So if you want to entertain, you have to connect with your character, your story, and the people you're bringing the message to. Where content is uh, telling a bad joke, I feel like content doesn't have meaning it is just blank information going into your head and going out art is special it has substance and it enriches your life whereas content just falls up a blank space that's a hard one um i think the first one was the first time that all of us went out together when we went to Latinos. It was a completely different experience for me. And I got to know people in a very different way. <laughs> um, and then the second one, I think, would be the movie. We all got to know each other in a more professional way. Um, but we all kind of, I want to say stayed friends, but I mean, it wasn't really what I want to say, if that makes sense at all. But yeah, the movie was definitely the second one. And I think that today and tomorrow, the end year show, I feel like that's gonna be the third one. Uh, meeting everybody. Um, since I was a hybrid student, I started with evening classes on Monday at first. So it was kind of nerve wracking walking into the class and there's these 10 other people that know each other that have had a week of getting to know each other and their schedule is different than mine and all of that. So it was really, really scary walking into that. But immediately they all made me feel welcome. They all made me feel like, oh, you can be part of our group. You can be part of our disgusting, that's a joke for our WhatsApp group. But yeah, so that, that was something that really stood out to me. Um, definitely the first SGE, because it, it's a lot different from anything I've done before. No, I stayed fit or high school exam or practical was ever like this SGE because it's literally in a theater with light and it's like a very professional thing that it, I was freaking out. I was like, yo, <laughs> I wasn't ready for this. If I knew this is what it's going to be like, I'm going to practice a little bit harder. But yeah, so definitely the first SGE and the Halloween party, I have to say, is not necessarily because it was Halloween or everything, but just it was the first time since COVID struck last year that I went out with a group of friends and just had fun. It wasn't work, it wasn't rehearsing, it was just to have fun. And I, I think I really needed that. To take responsibility for myself, to better my work ethic, to preserve relationships and to work on them, <laughs> to not be put off by little insignificant um, arguments, um, 
to exercise since your movement was a bad, bad experience when you're not flexible. Mm. Um, I've been pushed to embrace my bruises and my literal and fi figurative bru bruises. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. I don't want to say the lecturers are harsh because they really do care and they really are nice people, but they are harsh when it comes to class. Um, they really take your weaknesses and they push on that to make it stronger. They don't care about what you're good at. They really don't care. And they will never admit to you that you're good at something. But the thing, like for myself, like I said, I like control. It's really difficult when I step on stage or when I have to do a scene to let go and just let it feel and see what happens. It's a really, really difficult thing that I struggle with because I rehearse it, I practice it to make sure it's perfect, but it's not authentic then. And they really, really pushed me to get out of my head and just let go. Like the moment you start performing, just enjoy it. The last two uh, terms, I pushed myself very hard. It was when I actually it was when we when we had COVID and we were isolated that's when it really hit me that I wanted to go to class uh, I didn't want to stay at home so I started working harder uh, absence makes the heart harder fonder I guess but especially with movement I pushed myself a lot and that's why this fucking happened uh, this year um, I pushed myself with screen a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, yeah, I feel like being hard on yourself is a necessity in this line of work. I was not confident at all. Oh, I'm not, it's not very confident, but I'm extremely shy, etc., etc. I'm a very introverted person. So, Coming here and especially meeting the people that I've met have allowed me to open up more. So I'm not as introverted as I was in the beginning of the year. I feel like I can actually talk to people now. Um, yeah, like, and then obviously with acting and like the whole drama thing, Kaz and all those people have pushed me really hard to be better. Obviously, I'm still not actor, but. I am better, I hope. Okay, so what I do is I go stand somewhere alone, take a deep breath in, um, I focus on what I'm about to do, because when I was in a singing competition, my uncle, who was a doctor, told me, if ever you feel stressed, you breathe in, and then you breathe in until your lungs can't take any more air. And then you breathe in more. So you go, and then you breathe out. And that's gonna calm you down. And then you think of what you're about to do, and you go on and you do that. Um, I start off by praying. Uh, it's, it's something that I really need to do is just to know there's somebody else on stage with me, a higher being, just looking after me. That, I will remember my words, I will remember my lines and moves and things that go with it, the lights will work out, the other people acting with me will work out and things like that. But also in general, just to give thank you, because I think I often forget afterwards to thank God for my performance, if it was bad or if it was good. So I made a point of it to do it prior to the performance, to say thank you for the great performance that I know he's going to give me, because every performance is a lesson. and. A chance that I get to perform my talent that God gave me. I mean, he picked me to be a filmmaker and an actress. He could have picked everybody. I could have been like my sister working in a nine-to-five business job. Depressing, you know. It's terrible. So just that thankfulness. And then it's usually either, either running my lines or listening to music to get me in a mood. artist in a way of I can speak the words I'm afraid to speak on a stage or in front of a camera. I uh, feel creative. 
an artist is a creative being and when I'm on stage I feel creative. In the literal sense of the word I create paintings, drawings, I perform. In the figurative sense I see the world and I make up stories and I view it as I want to view it and that cr that requires a lot of creativity and artists are known for their creativity so yeah physically not so much I um, grew up with a sister and a very close friend group so I've always been used to people in my space or, or I don't want to say touching me because it sounds weird but like I don't, I'm not, I'm a hugger, a very big hugger, so I'm used to always having a physical interaction with people, but mentally and spiritually, a lot. I came into a space where I was one of the few Christians, and I was one of the few with a certain mindset of how we should treat people and how we should uh, tackle our work and our ethics and things like that. And I was pushed into this group of people coming from very different backgrounds from me and having a lot of different opinions on other things and situations would be handled a lot differently. I'm a person that if there's conflict, I'm upfront about it. I would like to talk to you and be like, I don't like when you did this, you tell me you don't like it, we discuss it and we move on. And I feel like I was pushed into a group where since I have a very strong mental health, it's fine, but not everybody else, but not everybody else always has a strong mentality uh, since we are in the 21st century, it's, it's really difficult with depression and anxiety. You can't always put people in confrontation situations. It's been pushed hard. Um, <clears throat> I've been pushed by the lecturers, myself, my fellow students, my parents. And I'm grateful for it because I grew as a person. It was the first time that Kaz and Laura asked me to go and be an extra on one of the sets. Um, and I got there and everyone is so nice, but you can see they're busy with things and everyone's professional and they're having fun with what they're doing. And I was just an extra, but I felt so part of everything that I was, I was like, this, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Please, uh, I did dance when I was little and I enjoyed being on stage. It was exhilarating and in grade 9 when I uh, calmed down with the dancing and kind of stopped doing it <laughs> it's okay um, I was a dancer so when I stopped dancing and stopped performing on stage performing on stage uh, I started fucking missing it a lot and when I had like drama classes or anything that I was in front of people, I was like, I really miss this. I really miss being an entertainer. And uh, my final choice was made in grade 11 when I was doing a monologue and I just, just people applauding and I was like, I love this. I've never been surrounded by, this is going to sound very rude, by talented, capable people in terms of performing. So it, my, my ego took a huge knock when I first came into class and I saw all these incredibly talented people. And being surrounded by these people made me forced me to be happy with my capabilities and um, motivated me to push myself and I don't know it, it, it I've been knocked down a couple times and it only encouraged me to get up again because I want to pursue this I want this so badly <laughs> um, there was times I was encouraged and there was times I was discouraged. Uh, I like getting critique. Uh, I like getting the brutal honesty and sometimes it will hurt. Yes. And I will 
feel a bit discouraged for a second and then I'll be like, you know what, I can work on this. It's not something set in stone for me to be always cocked or me always to be shit. I can work on it. I can forget myself. I can do this, I can do that. Especially, uh, I've learned one thing is when people tell me you're crap or you're not that good in it, I want to prove them wrong. I really want to. So, I've been actually very encouraged, especially in Bali by my seniors. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say negative. But I do think it's it's good to start from the bottom, to be broken down and build up. But not in a negative way, like nobody told me I was shit and I should stop acting and stop doing this, I'm never gonna make it. Nobody told me that. Just very intimidating. I feel like I was pushed into this situation where everybody around me suddenly was good. I mean, I come from a school where I was the drama kid. You know, everybody knew me from, oh, yeah, she's the one that wins the trophies or gets all the roles or things like that. Now to a situation where everybody was like that. So you really, really had to push and work hard. And that takes a stroll on your confidence because you think, am I good enough? Considering there's 10 other people that want the same thing I do at the end of this, am I good enough to make it? So negatively, because I think myself, <laughs> but they definitely do push me that I think in the th three years that I'm going to be here, I will have a lot of confidence that I maybe never would have had. Okay, so in the beginning of the year, I wasn't confident or um, comfortable with anything as yet. And then second term, we got to the class and we had to do an improv scene with a tripod and um, you have to use this tripod as anything except as a tripod. So I extended it to the highest that it could be and my improv scene was being a stripper which is completely out of my comfort zone. <laughs> and all of the, the girls especially in the class were like yes go CJ and I felt so what? my guy. <laughs> I felt so comfortable with being around these people. I was like, oh, okay, they're not gonna judge you. Seniors, however, have been, um, it's been a different story with them because I do not feel comfortable with them all the time because I don't know them enough. But with the movement piece, I've gotten to know Anai a lot more and she's pushed me to a level of confidence that I didn't know I had. So I'm really thankful for that. I've grown my love for art department, for writing, directing, even though I haven't directed at all, but I want to do it. Um, yeah, whereas in the past it was just performing, but yeah, I don't know. This, year has opened me opened me eyes opened my eyes to different categories within the entertainment industry which i want to pursue actually i have i always thought that I, like film was the thing that i wanted to do and then i got to like theater acting and stuff and i do enjoy that but i think children's theater is one of my favorite forms of theatre, which I do not think would be the case at all. But like, I feel like seeing and hearing those kids laugh and you know get along with you putting on the show for them, it's, it's a completely different feeling than you know doing it for older people. So definitely that. And then obviously, you know, behind the scenes, I didn't think I would really like to be behind the scenes with like filming or sound or anything like that, but coincidentally enough, like it, that's not the right word, Interesting, interestingly enough, it's, it's one of the, the biggest things that I also want to do, so just to entertain people, that's what I want to do. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, physical painter, fucking love it. Screenwriting, love it. Uh, I'm starting to like screen, starting. I, uh, screen acting or screen writing? Screen acting. 
okay. about screenwriting. I uh, love theater making as well, learning the history as well, filmmaking. Uh, film history, still struggling a bit there. Yeah. I, uh, I enjoy most of the things. Like, I like being a jack of all trades. And that's entertaining. I would actually, I really like sound. Doing the sound. I learned that. Um, uh, so recently, on my path came continuity and script supervising that I have never in my entire life heard about. But I've always been that person when watching a movie, I'd be like, well, her hair was here, and now in the next shot, it's there, and then in the next one, it's here, and it freaks me out. And now I've learned that there's a person on set doing that that's supposed to look after that. And I'm, I'm really intrigued by it, really intrigued on learning how to do it and how to be a script supervisor as well to make sure that everything flows smoothly on set. Would you say that script supervising and continuity helps you with how you like to have certain amount of control? Oh, definitely. Uh, considering the script supervisor is the person that makes sure that everything that needs to be filmed is filmed and everything that is filmed is sent to the editors, that nothing goes missing. Script supervisor is one that checks that everybody's on time, that it's basically the person under the producer and director just running around and making sure everything happens that needs to happen uh, and that it's recorded that it happens. So I, I think that's where I can use my control as a good thing. It's a positive uh, aspect of me to have in that situation. And I think that's why I, I love it as well. I think it's because it really focuses on my strengths and my weaknesses and uses them in a good way. <laughs> Wanneer jy omring is met mense, wat die selftas proces as jou weet, word het veel makkeliker om vriende te maak. Vooral want die moendelikheid van toekomstige collega's voor jylle le. Nie beseer die die vriendskap oppervlakkig is nie, is dit veel makkeliker om te vorm en om te onderhou. Die laat aan de vroe ochende en klassies hier saam, bring te vore jou mens wees, maar daar sal die tyd jou professionalisme en werksethiek. Een van die vele dinge wat jy leer opstel, in klas en in algemene lewe, is dat geduld verplichtend en onvermijdelik is. Werk begin vroeg ochende en herklop soms oortijd. Mense toets jou hier meer en baie dinge loop skeef. En thuis is soos die is geduld al wat die vrede behoud is in amal. Patience is key. Patience is key. Okay, last question. Is there anything? that you would like to say for your future self? Control the frick out. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Be natural. <laughs> um, I think um, research more, like research lights and cables and stage managing I in advance. I feel safe doing this. Yeah, I mean, I remember saying to her in the beginning of all of this, I so badly wanted to do tech, like either, cam uh, either lighting or sound. And the moment I was put on lighting, everything just went wrong. Like none of the lights wanted to work. The board didn't want to work. And I didn't know anything of it. So I think definitely research is, is a thing for my future self. It's read. Read, you illiterate child. <gasps> Three leaf clover. Hey! For myself. You've got that on camera. Oh, it's a got four love. leaf clover. No. Dumb. Oh. We both break yes, out. Nadine. I would... Uh, stop overthinking honestly and hold myself back i would rather go full out and let them tone me back down uh, instead of trying to pull out the best performance i have yeah because um i overthink oh what are they gonna think is this good is that good just just go for it i feel like uh, for my future self yeah. especially just do it, mm. <laughs> just <freaking> like do it. <laughs> okay oh.
CJ? Um, confidence. Get your confidence, you know. Do freaking beautiful. Do what you want to do when you want to do it. Because at this I point, I feel as if I'm not doing everything that I want to be doing. Yeah. And the moment that I start being confident, doing what I should be or what I want to be doing, I think everything, my whole life, would be a lot happier. Yeah. yeah. I would also tell my, my, my future self. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I tell my future self to, to, to not let anybody stuff affect me and just be confident in yourself because. I mean, you can do it. You're a strong ass mofo. You can like you get you're capable of. Doing, you know when you when you when you when you when you when. You, when, you, when, you, when, you, when <laughs> also, I feel like I want to be more involved. Mm. I want to give it be given the opportunity mm. to do more. Mm. Like yesterday, I stayed later, and it was mm. actually fucking yeah. nice. Mm. It was freaking nice. Mm. 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 Yeah. So. Okay. Well. We're done. Yay! Okay, and we are done with our first year, y'all. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Kind of so few mirrors need to be reflected in story. They bring a change. They bring an impact. So it's because of what after the Lord wrote on the misdoubts to nail. Now the kids start by visiting after that creative verbal plaza fantasy.